Hi, everybody. All right, we are th successfully three tests into the semester. Uh, I'm very pleased with the results that you guys are producing. I think you're starting to get these ideas. I think the foundation is very solid, and it's time for us to move on and into consumer choice. Tonight, we're going to talk about three elements of consumer choice. We're going to talk about the substitution effect, the income effect, and elasticity. Let's jump right into it. First of all, a little bit of a review. Why does the demand curve slope downward? Well, we've talked about this idea of inverse relationship between price and quantity. And in fact, intuitively, that makes sense. As the price of something goes down, I'm likely to buy more of that product. And when the price goes up, I'm likely to buy less of that product. Let's talk about two things that are going on behind the demand curve uh, that are driving that behavior. The first is the substitution effect. The substitution effect basically says that as the price of a product change, changes relative to the price of other products that are substitutes, acceptable substitutes, I am going to buy more or less of that product. The example I have here is paper versus plastic bags at checkout at a grocery store. So if I'm checking out and the clerk says, today paper bags are a penny each and plastic bags are 10 cents each, I'm likely to choose the paper product over the plastic product because of price if I haven't brought my recyclable, bag, recyclable bags with me. If I go in the next day and they say, actually today paper bags are 10 cents and plastic bags are 1 cent, I am likely to switch from the paper bags to the plastic bags. So my demand for plastic actually has changed because what used to be 10 cents is now 1 cent. So I am very, very attracted to that lower price and will buy the plastic product instead of the paper product. If I want to buy a new TV, the income effect that I'm going to experience means that as my income, income goes up, I am likely to see a corresponding increase in demand for those more expensive goods as I make more money. Now, let's remember two quick things here regarding normal goods and inferior goods. They're in your chapter and I think they're important because they're going to come up in subsequent uh, chapters. Remember normal goods. So as income goes up, demand goes up. Versus inferior goods, income goes down, driving demand down. So normal good, the TV that I talked about. Inferior goods, something like products bought at Colts, which we talked about a, a couple of sections ago. Okay, let's move on to elasticity. So I have a question for you. Do you ever wonder why there are differences in the change in demand for things like expensive things like ocean cruises versus gas when prices change? If the price of an ocean cruise goes way up or goes way down, cruise lines see dramatic changes in the demand for that product. Gas, on the other hand, if prices go up or prices go down, in the short term, they'll, we'll see very little change in the quantity of gas demanded. Similarly, on the production side, price of chicken goes up dramatically, producers will produce more chicken. Price goes down dramatically, they'll produce less versus something like gold, where price goes up, price goes down, the demand for that product on the purchasing side may go up or down, but the production, change in production, actually is very minimally affected by changes in the price of that product. These examples help start introducing the idea of elasticity. Elasticity, simply defined, is the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. So how sensitive is the demand for a product? How sensitive is it to a change in price? I have drawn down here at the, at the bottom, I have two curves. The first is a curve that's relatively inelastic, and then the other is one that's relatively elastic. So let's talk about these. First of all, let's use this definition and this chart. If the change in the price of a product, so here's a change in a price, causes a significant change in the consumption of that product, you see here change from here to here, then the demand for that product is called elastic. There was a significant change, so a significant sensitivity to quantity when the price changed. Now let's look at an inelastic product and an inelastic curve. You see here the same relative price change, so here and here, and yet a very, very small change in the quantity demanded. That is what we call inelastic demand because of the fact that the same price change here that we had here 
results in a much, cha much smaller change in the quantity demanded. And that simply means that there's less sensitivity for this product around changes in price than there was for demand for this product around changes in price. So that's, that's the basic difference between the idea of inelastic versus elastic uh, uh, coefficients of demand. Now, let's look at calculation of elasticity. And specifically, the best place for us to start really is the price elasticity of demand. So price elasticity of demand simply defined is percentage change in quantity demanded, and I ought to have an ED there, sorry, demanded over percentage change in price. Well, let's break that down. Percent change in quantity demanded, so I simply wrote that in a shorter notation. Percent, quantity, percent change in quantity demanded there percent change in quantity demanded equals change in quantity demanded over initial quantity demanded. Then for percent change in price here, percent change in price, I've broken that out to change in price over initial price. Let's take a look at an example. When the, bottle, when the price of a bottle of orange juice increases from $2 to $3, the quantity demanded from falls from 1,000 bottles a week to 800 bottles a week. What is the price elasticity of demand for orange juice? Well, using these three equations, we can very quickly arrive at that number. Percent change quantity demanded, as we learned up here, is the change in quantity demanded over the initial quantity demanded. So the change in this case, 1,000 to 800, 1,000 minus 800 is 200, and the initial quantity demanded is 1,000. So 200 over 1,000 equals 20%. Change in price, well, price went from $2 to $3. So that's a $1 delta, again, change in price, 1 over the initial price, which was $2. So 1 over 2 equals 50%. Now, using those two numbers, we look at price elasticity, price elasticity of demand, which again is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price, 20 over 50. 20% divided by 50% equals 0.4. That becomes uh, the coefficient of elasticity, 0.4. That's the important thing to know for tonight's lesson. Uh, how to calculate this, we are going to talk in future lessons and future modules of the Krugman book about how we apply that number. Now, the book also talks, to, talks about an alternate way to measure price elasticity or calculate it. Don't worry about that for right now. I don't agree with the book that that's something we need to know at this stage. We may get to that later, but for tonight, things to keep in mind, again, substitution effect, the income effect, again, the idea of getting a better deal, substitution effect, and the idea of my money going farther when I have more, so my demand goes up. Remembering normal goods versus inferior goods. Remembering, remembering the definition of elasticity. The difference between relatively inelastic demand and relatively elastic demand measured by sensitivity to change in price. Here's one insensitive. Here's one that is much more sensitive to change in price. And then last, very quick and simple way for calculating price elasticity of demand. That's it for, not, for tonight. Have a great evening, and I will see you all on Wednesday.